Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and I continue to get some great questions from viewers on the WD MyCloud. This has clearly been uh, the most popular product review I've done on my channel in quite some time, maybe next to the Tesla. Um, so we're going to take a little look now at adding remote users to the drive because they do have a way that you can just give out little code numbers to your friends and family and give them the ability uh, to access the drive from anywhere they might be, which is a pretty convenient thing, especially if they're not always at your home or office. Now, before you start, what I do suggest you do uh, is go into the control panel and take a look at your shares. And the shares are the little folders that you've created on the drive. Because if you have it set to public access, like I have this Blu-ray folder to right now, uh, anyone who is given access to the drive, that could be even just a single folder on the drive, uh, will also have access to all the public areas as well. So if you don't want them to see it, uh, what I would suggest you do is go over and turn that public access off, and then you can set up uh, individual users rights on there. So for example, this test folder, uh, I have full access to it, but my, my wife doesn't. And this is just a test folder. She does have access to everything in the house, I assure you. Um, but uh, you know, those are some of the uh, little features you want to make sure you have set properly because you know, even though you might be inviting a friend in, you want to make sure that you're not giving them access to things that might be private to your household. So uh, just make sure you kind of do a little housekeeping uh, before you go ahead and set that user up. Now, what you can do is set up the users in a couple of, uh, a couple of ways. The first thing you want to do, of course, is add a user user and we'll just call this test user and we'll give them a fake email address here um, and set up a password and what will happen is when you hit save um, it'll actually send an email off to that uh, user's email address to validate them because Western Digital, and this might be an issue for some people because you know there's some intermediary stuff going on here, uh, Western Digital is going to kind of manage that access. So they're going to send Western Digital, not your hard drive, is going to send an email to somebody uh, to validate them as a user. And the reason is, is that they kind of act as a clearinghouse between these drives and the person that wants to access them remotely. If you have this cloud feature turned on, that's how it works. So uh, you know, internally within your own network, if you were to disable the cloud feature, uh, the drive will manage all those user access rights internally. But uh, to allow that cloud access, uh, you're going to have to give a little bit of trust to Western Digital in order for that to happen. So just uh, keep that in mind as well. Once that user is set up um, and they're validated themselves, you can go over to cloud access. And then what you can do is uh, click on an individual user and you can give them a code. So what we've done here is we've uh, pre-created a, I'm going to trash this code right after this video is over with, so don't try to get into it. Uh, what we've uh, done is we've created a code for Melissa here, and uh, we can just email that to her. And when she loads up the WD MyCloud app on her uh, Windows or Mac machine or on her Android or, or uh, iOS tablet, what will happen is, is they will uh, get uh, into the, the system just by using that code word. And again, WD, Western Digital, is managing that transactional process there. So uh, you'll want to make sure that uh, you, know, you just bear that in mind. There's always you know, potential that some government entity or somebody else could request access to your uh, data, and, and you may not know if they get into it that way or not. So I would, you know, just again, just be careful with uh, what you want to give away and what you want to put available onto the network. Now, another thing here is that uh, the, uh, my thing is right now in relay connection mode, and that means that uh, my firewall, my, my uh, Apple router, is blocking uh, direct access from the drive to the web. So it's ba basically being intermediated through uh, a WD server also to get to me. So that might slow down my transfer speeds a little bit. So what you can do is use uh, you know, your port forwarding on your router, or I don't recommend this, but you could turn on uh, un uh, UPnP, which is uh, plug and play or unplug and play, or whatever it is. Uh, you turn that on, and it'll automatically poke holes in your your router, but my suggestion would be you know, learn how to do port forwarding on your NAT router and then forward those ports directly so that when a user does want to connect to your drive, they're doing a direct connection and not relaying through WD servers. So, um, but once you get all that stuff up and running and send that code off to your friend, they are in. They can get in and, uh, and do all the things that you'd like for them to do. And the best part is when they come to your house and they're using uh, the drive on your local network, that same username and password uh, will work as well. And in fact, they, uh, if they're on their Mac or Windows machine, those drives will uh, show up automatically within their normal file operating system uh, structure. So uh, pretty cool stuff. I, am, I continue to be impressed with how they thought of a lot of ways that people are going to use this product. And uh, it's really just a really well-designed uh, hard drive. And I've been very, very happy with it. So that's how you get remote users in. Just know that you're going to be giving a little bit of trust to WD in the process. But uh, if you're just sharing photos and things that are not uh, too mission critical. It's certainly uh, a very convenient way to kind of manage your own cloud and not you know, rely on Dropbox or some other service to do it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.